good afternoon, everybody. Uh, can you all hear me okay back there? All right, good deal. Good deal. Sorry, we had a little bit of a hiccup with technology, uh, which is, you know, exactly what you want at a tech camp, right? So uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody out to, uh, uh, to Drupal Camp Atlanta. Uh, it's good to see everybody again. I've, I see a lot of uh, familiar faces. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody to this session, uh, Paragraphs in Depth. Uh, just a really brief introduction. Uh, my name is Toby Hagler. I am Director of Engineering at Phase 2 Technology. Um, I've been an architect on some projects like uh, uh, NBA.com and Weight Watchers, uh, which both uh, make extensive use of paragraphs. Uh, I've also uh, worked on uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center. Uh, Jake uh, Rockowitz was here earlier today uh, doing some, some training. I uh, worked with him on that. Um, I've also given some recent DrupalCon presentations uh, talking about the use of paragraphs uh, for content layout. So what are paragraphs? So at an abstract level, paragraphs are a clever way to organize your fielded data. Uh, they allow editorial side admins the ability to arrange content in a wide variety of ways. So in, in some Drupal circles, a lot of people still like to use uh, panels for content placement uh, or page layout. In that way, you can think of paragraphs as being uh, a way to, to lay out the building blocks of the content, all those fields within the content wheel of your uh, page, without all the wrappers, the menus, the headers, uh, all, all of the trappings of the rest of the page that uh, are, are pretty consistent across your site. So I like to think of uh, panels as gross layout and paragraphs as fine layout in the sense of gross and fine motor skills. So, Paragraphs, they're a type of entity, just like a node. Uh, taxonomy term blocks, you know, things that you can add fields to. So you can add fields to a paragraph. Uh, you can have paragraph types, which are analogous to content types. Uh, but deep down, a paragraph type, it's a revisionable entity, uh, which is important. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and it can be referenced as a discrete field from another content type. So the original intent of paragraphs was to let you break up your complex node content into something a little bit more manageable. So instead of putting all your content into a single WYSIWYG field, like images and videos, editors can now choose on the fly from predefined paragraph types, right? So uh, these are all independent from each other. Paragraph types can be anything you want from a single a uh, text block, uh, an image, uh, or something more complex like a slideshow where you have multiple images, videos, and all sorts of things moving around. Uh, paragraphs also let site developers control the theme and the output of each individual paragraph. This site, uh, this lets site builders keep content as fielded data. Uh, so even as it appears as a solid piece of content, so you see the the solid piece of content and the individual paragraphs uh, on the slide here. So imagine how this might impact your site if, uh, if you're trying to get something out now and you know next year you want to go headless, you don't want to rebuild your CMS, but you can rebuild a, a content uh, uh, front end for it uh, later down the road. So you're not, you're not dealing with um, a lump of, of useless markup at that point. So what does the module do? Paragraphs is a module. So first of all, uh, it adds the paragraph entity type, um, which can then be added to other entity types as a field. So uh, it, it basically introduces the paragraph entity to Drupal. So what are the benefits? Well, some of the benefits are pretty obvious. Like we talked about the fact that your content remains fieldable. Uh, it gives you a lot more fine motor control over the layout of your content. Uh, it's, it's more obvious and intuitive for editors uh, editors can kind of pick and choose. They know that they're dealing with a slideshow. They know they're dealing with, you know, a carousel or, you know, some other piece of uh, widget, um, like a hero image. Um, it, you know, and, and it lets you consolidate uh, a lot of different combinations of page views into a single content type. So here's a, here's a good example of that. So. This is, uh, this is taken from a, a project we worked on a, a while back. Um, so this is, this is a single content type that allows you to make all four of these pages. So we've got about a dozen different paragraph types that are in use here. Um, you know, nodes of the same content type can have wildly different uh, variations and orientations. 
these, so this is all from the page content type. Um, and we've got a number of different paragraphs that you can just pull in from a library of different layout options. Uh, and you could just keep adding one on top of another. But you can have a relatively simple page with, with just a, a carousel or uh, a couple of these like three ups, these uh, three column things that you see here, or you can go all out and make a crazy mosaic. So first of all, uh, after you've installed the paragraphs module, so how do you create a paragraph type? That's what we want to do, right? That's what we want to uh, do the first thing, you know, as soon as you turn on that, that module. So, uh, so here, I'll, I'll show you some of the, the basic steps in creating a new paragraph type. And uh, this is about as fancy as I get in my presentations, if I can get my mouse over here. So you can see the video here. As you can see, adding fields to a paragraph type is pretty much like adding any other type of entity, because, well, paragraphs are entities, right? So it's like adding fields to a content type or a vocabulary or a block. So we can create a photo gallery that's going to consist of a gallery title to display above the images. Uh, then we want to add some individual images. So because we can have a lot of photos, we're going to set the cardinality to, to be infinite. Uh, and does everybody know what I mean when I talk about infinite cardinality? Yeah, it's, it's the unlimited option. So uh, that's, that's going to come in a lot when you're dealing with paragraphs. You can just let that be infinite cardinality. Uh, so uh, one thing I did, do want to caution you about, when you're adding fields to a paragraph, you're, you're adding this to a, a new entity. So uh, you could potentially have a namespace collision when you're creating new fields, because if you already have an image on your node, on your content types, um, every field is going to be tied directly to that, that entity bundle. So you have your image field that's already part of your content type, but you can have a separate image field, same name and everything, uh, that's going to belong strictly to paragraphs. So any fields you add to paragraphs, you can reuse between other paragraphs, but you can't reuse that on blocks or taxonomy terms or content types. Um, so it's a matter of how you want to name things. It's always good to come up with a naming convention for fields. Uh, but in this case, we can get away with just saying gallery image, uh, just to keep it from being less confusing. So you, uh, you should be doing some additional configurations anytime you add a field, whether it's a content type or a paragraph. So um, after you've added the field, you want to go through and, and manage the form display. Um, Organizing your forms can make the difference between night and day on the usability of editing your content. So think about your users and not just people consuming the content on the website. Your users are also the editors and the admins. And so think about them and, and what they need whenever you're trying to create a good editor experience. So just, just go through that little bit of extra effort uh, to manage the display, how you want to display the form, things that you can show and hide. Uh, so also managing your display settings, that's going to help themers spend a lot less time unsetting values that you don't care about and more time using them correctly. So, uh, so you've created a new paragraph type, and it's just sitting out there ready to, ready to be used. So like I said, paragraphs are fields, sort of. So it's a little bit more complicated than that, but for the, for the purpose of this section here, we're just going to treat, cr talk about paragraphs as being a field. So, in reality, that, that field uh, is, is actually, it, it's an entity reference revision field, uh, which is making a reference to your paragraph entity. Um, and, and the reason that that's important is because if you have uh, workflow, if you have any kind of content moderation, uh, if you have the ability to make your nodes revisionable, this will keep uh, the paragraphs themselves as a revisionable field. So if you make a change to the paragraph, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be consistent with all your other fields uh, if you have any kind of revisions turned on. So you probably won't be able to select any other type of reference value whenever you're, you're going through the dropdown. It's just going to be paragraph. Uh, there's maybe a few mo other modules that will take advantage of revisionable fields, uh, but paragraphs is ma the main one. So uh, also, like, like I said before, you're going to want to choose unlimited cardinality almost all of the time. Uh, it's going to let you click, you know, add another paragraph, add another paragraph, add another paragraph whenever you're creating your page content. So 
Uh, you can, of course, limit it to a, a fixed number of things. You, do, you, know, you might not want editors creating 30 slide shows, maybe not, um, if you ever want the page to finish loading. Uh, so this is, this is going to make the, the editorial experience a little bit cleaner. So finally, you select the paragraph types that should be allowed for this field, just like you would do for any type of reference uh, field widget. You can, you can choose, uh, you know, if you have an entity reference field and you want to select, I only want page and article content types, I don't want some of these others, you can do that with paragraphs. Uh, and, and not selecting a paragraph, of course, will make all of them available from your field. So there we have it, folks. You've got a paragraph field on a content type. Uh, it's going to show up there, you know, listed as, uh, you know, entity reference revision. But yeah, just that, bear in mind that that's a paragraph. Um, everything else is going to look pretty standard uh, in terms of how you treat uh, paragraphs as a field. So you know, you'll notice that this is, uh, you know, the, the name of this field is body in, in paragraphs, uh, in parentheses, we say slices. Um, a lot of times when you're talking to other Drupal developers, you're going to hear different terms for this same sort of thing. You're going to hear it called slices. You'll, so, you'll sometimes you just hear it referred to as paragraphs if it's a very technical group. Uh, you'll hear it as bands of content. But uh, it's a very common trend, you know, in, in web design right now to have just the bands of content. You know, those, you know it makes it you know, for a really super simple, uh, responsive site. So slices uh, is just a very common name for this. So that's why, that's why it's listed uh, as slices there. So you've created a paragraph type. You've attached it to a content type. Uh, that's all well and good. Um, you know, just like content types, though, that's just half the battle. So you have, you have a way for inputting content uh, into the system now. Uh, but what about controlling the way it looks? So one of the key benefits to paragraphs is that it does let you control your content layout very atomically. Um, in another talk that I, I do sometimes about paragraphs and, and compound fields, I talk about atomic design. Does anybody familiar with, with atomic design and some of the, some of the basics? So f for those that don't, the, the real quick primer is that uh, think about your, your content in terms of atoms, molecules, and organisms. You know, atoms are basically the smallest thing that you can have that you can't break up a link, an image, uh, and then an, uh, a paragraph. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about paragraphs too much here. Uh, I'm actually running a tally to see how many times I can say the word paragraphs. Um, a molecule is comprised up of a couple of different atoms. Um, so you might have, um, let's say, a, a photo field, which contains the image atom and a text atom and a title atom. And then an organism might be something like a paragraph where you've combined several atoms and several molecules together. And, and so atomic design, the principle behind it is that if you, if you break everything down into constituent components like atoms and molecules and organisms, your content is going to be as consistent as possible throughout your site. So you design it once, you build it once, and you just keep referencing it up. Uh, just like inheritance and, and everything else that you do uh, in backend when you're do, doing a lot of uh, object-oriented programming. So all that to say, one of the key benefits to paragraphs is that it does let you control your content layout at a very atomic level. And uh, so uh, none of that is really worth its weight and salt if you don't have the ability to theme it. So here we have just a raw field. This is a completely unthemed photo, uh, paragraph gallery um, you know, so in our test article here, the gallery has three images, uh, but each image just gets dumped right on top of the other. Uh, the paragraph field has no markup or CSS associated with it. And while CSS is important, and you could probably just theme this with CSS, um, chances are you're more, you want to get a little bit more nitty gritty with, uh, with the details, and so you want to have a special template to control it, so you're in luck. So paragraph types all instinctively have uh, a template associated with them. So uh, the paragraph module has the theme function uh, that will also do uh, template suggestions. So you have, just like with content types, you have paragraph underscore, under, underscore view mode or type. So you can have things like paragraph quote dot html dot twig and paragraph gallery dot html dot twig. So you have all the, all the normal theme keys and all those all the sorts of behavior that you're used to expecting from 
content types and taxonomy terms, Paragraphs does the exact same thing. So, yeah, um, so, you know, it, so you actually have uh, two elements to this. So you have the paragraph template itself, um, but then you also have around that the field template, right? So uh, because your paragraphs are being treated as a field, you do have the ability to create field underscore underscore paragraph underscore underscore the field name so that you can target very specifically the field that goes around that. So if you need to have things like uh, the paragraph is going to be, you know, uh, a gallery that can appear in multiple spots on your website and your field is going to need to be, you know, either maybe you're doing zebra striping or uh, you're doing like the, the, I forget what they call that in a uh, bootstrap where you have the constrained and then the full width, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Containers. Yeah, the the containers you have you have fixed containers and full width containers, and so you know you might you might want to vary it up like that. So you have your field uh, template that lets you control that, and then you can just reuse the same paragraph template without having to redefine it for all the special cases. So I just wanted to call out that you actually have two levels of paragraph and field templates that you can manipulate and play with. So. Right here, what we have is just a really simple example of you know, just a compound field using paragraphs, and we call it quote. Uh, so that quote, it contains an image, it's got some quote text, it has you know, the source or the attribution, uh, and then you know, a link to another piece of content off of the, on the site so that you can go read more about that author maybe. Um, one, one additional thing to the, to the paragraphs module that might be of substantial help when you're trying to create a good editorial experience uh, is that you, there's the paragraphs type help module. Now, a lot of people know that naming things is one of the, the three hard problems in computer science, um, or the two, I guess, uh, the two hard problems in computer science, uh, the others being um, cache and validation and off by one errors. But the um, naming things, uh, sometimes it's, it's easy to just describe it, and that's your title. So it's paragraphs type help module. Uh, and what that does is that actually will, will let you attach a screenshot, um, a mock-up or whatever you want to use, uh, to the paragraph type. And so you have a collapsible uh, field that lets you see a sample screenshot that will clearly delineate what each field that you're going to put in there does. So it makes it super simple. If you have 30 fields on your paragraph, which is a little ridiculous, but come on, somebody's going to request it. Um, you have the ability to now annotate what each field uh, will look like when it's fully rendered. So here we are, we're at, you know, so we, we've collapsed that screenshot, we got out of the way, we know what we're doing here uh, because we've done this 30 times and we finally know what each field looks like. Uh, so here we're adding a quote field to a page node. Uh, we've added an image and filled out the quote text and some source values and so uh, this is just like editing any other piece of content. And then here it is rendered with, our, with our, our custom template. So it's the same quote field from our demo page with all of the elements of a quote field It's fully themed. So you kind of expect now, you know, based on, you know, you've, you've themed content types before, you've themed some other things before, you kind of expect something like this. So we've got paragraph dash dash quote dot html dot twig, uh, rolls are out off the tongue. So here is a really simple uh, block of markup for that quote. Um, so it, it's just a really typical Drupal twig template. Uh, it's kind of gross and messy, but you can really clearly see there's the HTML markup with twig variables uh, for all the paragraph fields. Uh, my favorite, by the way, I, I kind of highlighted it, but it's actually harder to see here, I think, maybe. But it's paragraph.fieldquote.programtag.0.entity.name.value, and we could probably add more dots if we wanted to. So this is perfectly valid syntax, um, but it's just, it's just hard to read, and it's, it's even hard to say. So uh, I do want to make a quick aside about Twig templates. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know, but for those that don't, I, I like to share this. Uh, one thing that you can do in a Twig template is set a variable block. Uh, here we've, we've created a class called data. Uh, that's just going to help us create some, some shorthand within, within that one template. It's, it's contextually contained to the template. So instead of using pre-process hooks in a module, which you can certainly do, and there's cause to do that, 
Um, you, can, you can also just clean up your variable names uh, inside a twig template like this. So, and, and this is arguably better for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, all transformations to variables are happening in the same place. You, you, you know, where is this data.source defined? Well, it's just, you know, a few lines of code above it. It also gives you better visibility where things are coming from. There's no surprises, so you can kind of, you know, you can see where it's coming from and not worry that there's a pre-process hook somewhere else that you don't really know about. Some other developer on the project six months ago did. Um, doing some sort of like dark magic to, to transform some things because they didn't want to add dot value at the end of everything. Uh, and most, most importantly, doing this just makes it easier to read. You know, you're, you're clearly saying, you know, image source, body source, and program, those are all variables that you're going to use in this template. And they kind of annotate themselves a little bit because you can see clearly where they're coming from. You can, you can tell that these are paragraph values coming from other places. Um, and so, so now, all of a sudden, that, that same big block of markup that I showed on the previous screen, right here, that same amount of code comes down to this. Your markup is a lot easier to read and deal with. It's a lot more maintainable that way. Um, earlier, I mentioned uh, the, my love of atomic design and atomic components um, when, you're, when you're theming. It also works great for content modeling. It works great for everything. Um, you know, for those of you that are familiar with Pattern Lab, this is going to be a, a variation of that same thing. So you'll notice this is the same twig template in your theme. There's no markup because what we're doing, of course, we're using Pattern Lab to imp import all of our organisms. You know, that, that quote, that paragraph is an organism that's comprised of a couple of fields, which is you know, each, each field might be comprised of a couple of atoms. So we use the same data uh, object as before uh, from our, our markup template. Um, so, you know, paragraph dot field quote text dot value, you know, you can, you can see all, all of these things here. But what we're doing is we're setting up the data object, uh, which then passes the, those as variables to the different various organisms um, from, from our pattern lab template. So you can also, by the way, uh, you'll notice that we can pass um, the image to an image style using an image style filter. Um, you know, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, twig filters, very valuable because you can, you can now say, I want to apply this image style here, but in another template somewhere else, I can apply a different uh, image style on the same organism. So it doesn't really matter where you're defining that, it's, you can pass it along uh, whichever image style you want. Also, um, Whenever we do this include, you'll notice the syntax, the at organisms. Uh, that's a twig namespace. Um, and I like to call that out too if, if people are not very familiar with twig namespaces. Um, there is basically a definition file. There's a config.yaml file that can be part of your theme that you can define additional namespaces if you'd like. But organisms is a, is a twig namespace that uh, Pattern Lab Starter Theme is going to add for you. That just tells Drupal to look in, in the, it'll look in the Drupal install directory and then in the current theme directory and then for the organisms directory as a subdirectory of your theme. And so within there, we find quote dot twig dot, um, yeah, just quote dot twig. So uh, the reason that's important is it doesn't matter where it, li where it lives, and you don't have to worry about coming up with crazy nonsense paths and doing all sorts of pre-processed magic to guess where the file lives. And if, if you know you get a new front ender who wants to reorganize all your files one night when he's maybe had a couple of whiskeys and thinks he's really helping out the project, it's not going to break paths. Super cool. Uh, just for instance, you know for, um, this this project that I, I stole this code from, it actually lived in the templates directory under source underscore patterns slash zero three organisms slash quote dash. I mean, it was just ridiculous. It was like five or six levels down. So the quote template, you know, it includes, you know, more Pattern Lab templates. Um, so we're going to take a peek at one of the organisms that that Pattern Lab template included. So we went from our Drupal twig template that Drupal's expecting, and this is now part of Pattern Lab. So this, this is actually um, going to be part of Pattern Lab uh, that Drupal just inherits, and Pattern Lab can inherit. Um, and we've even done some projects recently where we used Grav CMS uh, to pull the exact same pattern lab from, for a completely different subsite. Um, so Pattern Lab will let you 
share your front end in a, 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 a direct Drupal theme, as well as uh, with external projects. It's very cool. So uh, in, th in this case, the image atom, uh, you'll, you'll see we're, we're including a few more things. We include that, that image.twig atom. Uh, and I'm not going to go into all the details of all the different things that you could do with Pattern Lab. Um, but imagine if every single template in your theme used the exact same item, uh, the, the exact same atom, or the same quote molecule, you, then you can start thinking about how consistent your markup is going to be. And if you do eventually want to go to uh, a headless version of Drupal and you've got all of this in, in Pattern Lab already, you can basically pick up your twig and maybe with a little bit of conversion magic or some transformations, you could very easily use that from you know, React. That, you know, Angular, I think, also likes to use uh, some twig templates. So you can do some uh, pretty cool transformations of your existing site without a lot of inconsistencies when you go from one front end system to the next. So, so in all of this, all of the images in the theme, they're going to use the same markup, right? So regardless of how the images are used in the higher level theme, inc including our quote paragraph, but for theming our, our quote paragraph type, you can see how we have the quote image uh, next to the quote underscore underscore content container. And that container uh, will have the body text and the source value if there is a source value. So this is, this is how, you know, it's just several layers deep. Uh, it's a little bit more abstracted, but ultimately it's, it's the same markup that we were dealing with uh, in our, our previous samples. <clears throat> so. I'm not going to lie, it's probably pretty obvious. I'm not a huge fan of using pre-process hooks for minor transformations. However, there's, there's times that they are needed, um, especially if you're combining fields um, or if you're deriving values from other sources, uh, or if you have some of the fields on your paragraph serve as configuration. So like, I want left or right aligned text. I want blue or black or white backgrounds, that sort of thing. So sometimes you want to use pre-processing uh, for, for your paragraph. So if you do need to do something to fetch additional data from another service or an external API, uh, then you might need to do some preprocessing for your paragraph type. So thanks to the theme function that is in the paragraphs module already, uh, you can see these are just kind of two of the, the suggested hook approaches that you can use. So you can have uh, hook preprocess paragraph, or you can have hook preprocess paragraph paragraph type uh, if you want to, if you want to have a preprocess hook that's only going to target that one type, uh, it's the same thing as hook form alter and hook form form ID alter. <laughs> I just have to think of the order of that one. So, um, so, so we've created a paragraph, we've added the paragraph to a content type, and now we've themed that, and so we have you know really pretty output for that paragraph within our content. So here's, here's the next step, is you can actually nest paragraphs. Because if you'll remember, paragraphs, we treat them like fields. And paragraphs take fields. And so it stands to reason that you could add a paragraph as a field to another paragraph. We do this a lot. Um, so uh, oftentimes what we'll use, we'll call it a layout paragraph. Um, and sometimes this might be the slice that we talk about. And we have you know, a content paragraph and a, and a slice paragraph. Um, that can contain you know, any number of possible paragraphs type. So, um, so, so the example I'm going to use uh, today is, is you can have a, a three-column slice of content, uh, each with a nested uh, paragraph within that. So this was taken from uh, the Weight Watchers website, uh, just, just a screenshot. So what you have here is an instance of a nested paragraph type. So we have an item list, uh, which is just a great big paragraph wrapper. Uh, and it has a few fields. Number one, it's got a background image. So that, that green bicycle thing going on here is just a background image that's, that's applied directly to the, the wrapper paragraph. Then we have the title text, same thing. It's just another field on the, on the parent paragraph. Um, you know, here it says plans for every lifestyle. And then number three, we have inside that three additional uh, fields for item paragraphs. So we have item list, and then we have item. And you know, earlier I suggested that a lot of times you're just going to want to set this to infinite cardinality. But this might be an instance where you want specifically three fields, no more, no less. Um, so each column in this item list paragraph contains a single item paragraph. And each child paragraph contains fields for the icon, some text, and, and a call to action uh, button at the bottom. 
So uh, this, is, this is the editorial experience for this. Uh, so here you can see the, the edit form for the item list paragraph with the three item paragraphs listed individually. And below that, you'll see the background image and the text field, which you know, we, we collapse those down into a field set container just to kind of keep the edit form clean uh, or as clean as possible. Um, because has anybody ever seen a really good looking uh, uh, node edit form in Drupal? Um, OK, yeah. Let's talk later. <laughs> I want to see that. Um, now, I've, I've seen some really cool things. You can actually uh, do a lot of magic to make drag and droppable paragraph fields and some other stuff. But yeah, it's most of the time, you're, you're lucky to get this. So. <clears throat> if you look at the paragraph entity class, um, I want to jump ahead a little bit. So we've, we've talked about uh, theming. We've talked about nesting paragraphs. Um, if you needed to get a little bit more programmatic with how you manipulate or, or manhandle the, the paragraphs, um, there's, there's a couple of things that you, you're going to want to know. So if you're, if you're in a pre-process hook, there's a couple of things you can do if you're nesting paragraphs. So, um, you know, get on, uh, it's not on api.drupal.org, but you can look at, you know, Drupal Contrib, uh, some of the, uh, or you can just, Pull it up in um, in your uh, IDE. It's going to probably show you the the um, the documentation for it. But the the paragraph entity class, the way it's defined, um, there is the get parent entity, uh, which is a public method that you can use whenever you're trying to manipulate uh, a paragraph. So uh, so like in this in this example code snippet, that's what we do. So um, that returns the the parent paragraph entity. So if you have if you're on, say, that, that item paragraph that's contained within the item list paragraph, from within the item paragraph in your preprocess hook, you can say parent ID equals paragraph get parent, ID, uh, get parent entity, and that returns the ID of the wrapper paragraph. So if you ever need to traverse paragraphs, that's, that's how you're going to want to do it from inside a preprocess hook. Right. So, the, so the question is, um, it, it will it will it return the the node or will it return the paragraph? So, in this particular case, um, paragraph arrow get parent entity. Uh, if it if it is nested within another paragraph, it will return the ID of the paragraph. If it is not nested, uh, then it will return um, the ID of the node. So, yeah, you're right. So, it, it's whatever the parent is. Um, so, it's it's a it's a it's a reference to the entity that contains it. Right. Yeah. So, so the so the concern is um, the the you know if you get the parent in this way, uh, yeah, you do want to provide a little bit of defensive programming to ensure that I I know for a fact that I'm inside another paragraph or or I know that I'm in a node or if I don't know, <laughs> I need to I need to figure it out. Yeah. But for the for the sake of this slide, because you know code slides are pretty gruesome, um, uh, I just did this. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, get parent entity is just going to do exactly what it says. It's going to, it's going to get the, the ID of the, the entity um, that contains this, so to speak. Um, yeah, so all, all that to say that um, if, you, if you know that you're in, say, that, that item paragraph, that's how you can get the, a, a reference to the, the parent wrapper paragraph. Um, you, so you can do that, you know, sort of pretty consistently for going all the way up the, the entity chain. Now, if you are doing some, some magic from within a class rather than a preprocess hook, you know, you've written a plugin, uh, say you want to extend the paragraphs module and you're doing this from a, you know, an extended class, uh, it, it does look a little bit different. Um, you know, obviously, number one, you know, if you're doing this from within a class, uh, you want to use dependency injection for the entity type manager. Um, so your code's going to look like this second example here. So it's, you know, parent entity equals entity arrow. Um, sorry, I've lost it on here. Um, it, but it, it's, it's referring item arrow get entity. So I may actually have not copied the correct code on this slide, and I apologize, and I'll correct it and put the correct code on the uh, PDF that I'll attach to the session later. So. Um, it's, it's, 
you almost never use it, but it's handy to have if you do. But it's, it's another way to, to, to reverse uh, parent and child paragraphs if you're doing this from within a class. So if you're ever having to create a, you know, um, a plugin that extends paragraphs or, or does something else, um, you know, if you're writing your own paragraph type or, or something uh, from, from code, uh, that, that's what you would want to use. That's, yeah, uh, good catch. So the, this is actually the code sample that I was talking about. I think I just, uh, in, in the heat of trying to uh, make this readable, I, I may have, um, <laughs> that's what happens when, um, when you're editing slides at 3 in the morning with a, uh, maybe a little whiskey. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but this, yeah, exactly. So that's, that's, that's what you're looking for is uh, the referring item uh, to get the entity. So the referring item is just, it's, it's actually, it's a magic variable uh, in PHP um, that lets you uh, traverse backwards, uh, so to speak, uh, which is to say, to go up and, and traverse to the parent. So this dollar entity is what? I'm sorry? What does dollar entity represent in this case? Uh, so dollar entity in this case is, so if you're, if you're writing a plugin for paragraphs, and so this code sample is actually, so it's, the slide's wrong, so th this is actually from within a class. Uh, entity is one of the variables that's passed through uh, dependency injection to your class. And so entity, in this case, is referring to the paragraph, like this paragraph entity. So. Right. Yeah, so this is how you would traverse to get the, the, the parent entity um, as, and, and that would actually, by the way, that would load the entity rather than giving you the uh, the ID. So, okay. So, um, so hopefully that that does walk you through everything that you wanted to know about paragraphs. Uh, uh, you know, it's always a little bit ambitious whenever you call a session something in depth. So I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of depth. But uh, if not, uh, does anybody have any questions? Ah, yes, sir. Uh, that's a good question. So the, the question is, uh, in the slide where we talk about setting the data object so that we can have cleaner variables, uh, if the variable doesn't exist, uh, what happens? Uh, in this particular case, um, without testing, I believe what will happen is you'll, you will get an error. So um, if the variable does not exist at all, if it's never been instantiated, uh, that does throw a twig error. But if you are dealing with a known paragraph uh, and you're, you're following this, you know, paragraph dot field quote text dot value, you know, for instance, um, if that field just is empty, uh, it still exists. It's just null. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Are there any other modules like that that you would use on almost every project for a paragraph? Okay, so the question is, um, you know, I mentioned the, the paragraphs type help module, uh, which, which helps extend um, paragraphs. Are there any other modules that would help? Um, there's a couple out there. Um, none come to the top of mind that I would recommend as like a go-to thing. So um, the, the value of paragraphs is that... Um, it allows you to really extend uh, the layout capability of, of content uh, without doing a whole lot. And so it actually doesn't need to do a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of other things, like I've got to have you know, X, Y, and Z modules, right? So um, I can't think of anything that, that comes in handy. Now, Paragraphs does have a dependency on, I forget the name of it, and I don't ever worry about it because I just throw it in Composer and let it figure out the dependency tree. But uh, it's, it's basically the revisionable entity module, um, I think that's what it's called. Is, so, so you have to have that to go along with paragraphs, but if you just throw in paragraphs uh, in composer.json, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fetch all the dependencies for you anyway. Okay, kind of a non-answer. Uh, yes, sir. So recently I was using node mm -hmm. with paragraph. So I thought, ah, I'm going to create a very elaborate um, Sample node with paragraphs and, and create various structures within that sample node. 
uh, for my client Adida to clone the node. And you have two nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they delete the stuff that they don't need. This is the a representative set sample with all kinds of things in it. And they clone it as a template. They got, got the nodes, they delete the stuff that they don't want, and they edit it and, and save it, and now life is great, right? Mm -hmm. They keep doing that every time they need. But this is what happened. When they did that, they cloned it, and then later on they said they deleted those things from, from this main node. It deleted the actual paragraph entity that these two nodes were shared. Okay. There are two problems with this. I can, I can understand. Now, I understood my mistakes to some extent, only to some extent. Even if both of them were referencing the same paragraph entity, and if they happened to edit this one here, it would only inadvertently edit the one here. Right, because they're shared. That much I can understand. Because it's not a deep copy. But deletion of this node should not cause deletion of the paragraph. Is there is there no uh, so my question basically is uh, is there no reference counting internally saying that I will delete the paragraph only when no no paragraph entity is referencing it or what um, back is Okay, so let me see if I can restate your question for the for the sake of the mic. So uh, you, you have a node with a paragraph um, with some content already in it, and you use node clone to create a copy of that. So you've cloned that node, and in the second node, you've gone through and deleted some stuff that you didn't want, so you can kind of work from a copy, so to speak, um, which is a pretty common thing. I think, you know, like if people are, are using like a front page node and you want to clone it to make some changes. So um, the, the problem you run into is that, yes, um, the paragraphs field, um, and I know I keep referring to it as a field, but it's really it's a it's a reference to a revisionable entity. Um, so what what happened in your case was you delete that paragraph from the cloned content, uh, and it it and it removes. Like paragraphs is trying to be nice and say, all right, you've removed the reference to it. Um, I assume you want me to also remove the content, and because you had a reference to uh, from that node to the paragraph entity, uh, that it deleted it for you and so then on your first node it, you know your your content's now gone sort of unexpectedly yeah that's a that's a pretty nasty problem and I, don't, I don't i don't know that i've ever run into that use case before um so i don't really have a good answer for you but i can tell you that the reason that happened is because the field is it's a reference to an entity uh right so um in that particular case uh um one thing you might want to look at doing um, as, as maybe a short-term fix to prevent this from happening again is when you when you node clone, um, you might want to uh, take a look at um, creating a revision uh, automatically for that content type because this is a revisionable entity. Um, you may have to do some testing. I don't know if this will work or not, but what could happen is that, you know then it would just delete that revision of the paragraph that is coupled with that node and then leave the other revision intact. I'm not sure, but that might be something you could look at. Um, I'm not sure of another good way to take a look at that, but that might be an, an interesting conversation in either the paragraphs or the um, node clone issue queues. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know a, a simple fix for that. Yeah. Do you have a processor or a clone for uh, something like a, uh, like a reusable paragraph item? If something's consistent or you want to update a single paragraph item that you've maybe recreated on a number of pages, um, you know, if you have anything in mind for that. I, that's one thing I've thought about and I haven't been able to solve that. Yeah, so the, so the question um, was, is there a workflow? So let's say you create like a, uh, a paragraph item that has some live chat information or a phone number. Yeah. So. So let's say you have a piece of content that lives sort of outside your, your node, like a block is a, is a, is a good example, without using blocks. Without using blocks. Um, uh, so a good workflow for that. Um, I mean, the, the workflow that, that comes to mind most often is you, there, is a, there is a module, and this might answer your question, uh, there is a module that allows you to have a, a, a block reference as a paragraph field. So you can, you can use that, um, and, and of course you then have to create a block. Um, I can't think of a good workflow for that, for shareable um, paragraph entities, because then you might run into that other problem where one node references that paragraph and another node references that same paragraph um, and, and deletes it. Um, 
but chances are what you're probably going to want to do is create maybe a custom entity that has maybe a couple of fields that does what you want for that reusable content. It's not a full-on block, but it's not a full-on node or another piece of content, and it's something that you could probably reference with a, with a pretty simple custom uh, field, which another session that, I, that I, I do that I just did in Badcamp talks, talks about uh, field API and compound fields, and that might be a good use case for that where you create a custom entity that has a couple of maybe you know, some compound fields that a paragraph um, can then reference. But yeah, that's I got for you. Okay, uh, any other questions? Oh, you, yeah. Uh, how, after how many paragraphs you feel in the process? Does it case it's too many and you feel like you know, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, so the question. It's a tough question. Yeah, so, the, so the, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So the question is, how many paragraphs is too much, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, it, it's, it's something I think um, a lot of um, a lot of UX folks struggle with, um, you know, especially if you're dealing with a, a project that you know lives over the course of years, right? Um, you know, it's really easy to to kind of you know just tack on one more paragraph type. Um, I mean, it, it's 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 really up to you and the the users and your and your content needs. Um, I you know, like with anything, I think a dozen is probably about the max limit for what I would want on a, on a large project. Um, I wouldn't want more than a dozen content types. If I can use paragraphs to kind of reuse a lot of the same content types. If, if I could just have a page that's the catch-all and I can just throw paragraphs at it or an article and throw other types of paragraphs at it, then I can keep that number of content types under 12. Similarly with paragraphs, um, you know, having having you know two dozen paragraphs, you know, might be a little bit much. Uh, not for any other reason other than just looking at the the drop down selection is, is a little bit tough. But what you can start doing is um, you can consolidate a couple of your paragraphs. So if you find a couple of paragraphs that are really close, like here I've got a two up, here I've got a four by four. What's the difference between a two up and a four by four? It's just two up and it's two up. Right? So what you can do is you can create a paragraph or modify an existing paragraph um, and add a couple of extra fields that are configuration fields. Um, and so they don't, they don't actually get displayed, but in your template that might be something like if you know, this is set to true, you know, you know, how many items do I want in my list? If, you know, if three, then do three across you know, so that it's all 33% wide. Um, if, it's, you know, if it's an even number, do it you know, so that it, it will stack two by two. So you could, you could use paragraph wrappers. Um, might be another way that you can consolidate some things. So you can have a paragraph wrapper that has a couple of things. Like if you always have um, you know, a title link and then you might have some images or some bullet text or something underneath, so you could have a wrapper image, or I'm sorry, a wrapper paragraph that has all of the really consistent things and then drop in another paragraph inside that. So that's, that's something you can do. But um, taking advantage of fields not as content but as configuration options for that, that one piece of content might be a way to kind of help let you consolidate. So you can have um, you know, left and right alignments. So you can have like a, a, an image followed by the text and then the paragraph you want underneath it, it's the same paragraph, but you know, you've swapped the alignment so you have text and then the image, right? So that might be something you could think about to see if there's a lot of similarities between paragraphs that you can... Yeah. I mean, I just uh, select these two, uh, what's, what's the good way to do it? Uh, what's a good way to do that? Um, so uh, one of the things you can do is uh, in, in your paragraph uh, itself, you can have, you can use like the field set um, field, for lack of a better word, to contain a bunch of configuration options. And so you can have uh, a content field set and a config field set, and then that way you can kind of keep things pretty, you know, pretty um, uh, self-explanatory. So you can put all your content in all the content fields and then for your config fields you can say I want this to be left or right aligned. I want to change the background color. I want to do you know I want this to be a three up or a two up or a four by four or whatever. So you can choose some of the different layout options. Um, and then within your template um, you know this might be actually a good instance of using a preprocess hook where you go ahead and kind of predefine some of the you know some of the, the bigger picture pieces of markup. Um, and then pass that on to your template. Or within the, the, the Twig template itself in that data block, that might be a good use of just using that data block, um, figuring all that stuff out with uh, a, a couple of quick uh, Twig conditionals to then control 
use this type of markup or that type of markup. You can, you can also make use of includes, so you can include other twig files, so that you can have the, the paragraph dash dash whatever dot html dot twig, which then includes conditionally other twig templates based on those config options. So that might help reuse a lot of the wrapper markup without having to, you know, do that, you know, get really crazy. Yeah. So just a quick time check. So I think we're about out of time, but are there any other quick questions? Wait a minute. Well, anybody, can you go to anyone else have any experience with using search, API, paragraphs, whether these things are automatically accessible and not having special to be done, or does it pay full standards? So the question is, uh, you know, how to search API work with paragraphs uh, to make paragraph fields searchable. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever had any issues with search API with paragraphs. So, um, I'm sorry. It's Apache Solar paragraphs. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Apache uh, Apache Solar paragraphs module um, helps. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to think. I, I didn't think that there was uh, any any real issue, but yeah, I think it was probably because that that module was just installed on my last Apache Solar project. So, um, but yeah, so that that will help expose all of the fields and paragraphs. Now, what I have found, um, and, and kind of tangential to that, um, I think what happens with Apache Solar if you're using nested paragraphs, um, much like if you're trying to translate uh, content, um, in in Drupal seven. Uh, nested paragraphs and translations was a nightmare. Um, in Drupal 8, because it's a true entity, uh, it's and and the translation API in, in Drupal 8 is phenomenal. Uh, by comparison, it, it does automatically handle all of the translations and, and exposes the field. So, um, what, what I think what um, Apache Solar Paragraphs does is, is essentially just flattens everything out, so that it finds all the fields you know at sort of the same level, and exposes that to Solar. Does that mean views works? Nested paragraphs as well. Um, views works with nested paragraphs. Yes. Um, you have to create, and, and, and I'm not, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. There's a, there's, so in views, you can set a relation to a paragraph. And um, so you have to, I think you have to set the relation to content, to the field of a content type, which happens to be that paragraph for it to, like if you want to go really deep into, into those fields. But yes, um, it views, works surprisingly well with, with paragraphs. There is a tutorial, I think, uh, paragraphs to explain how to use. Okay, yeah. Um, it, it seems like that I didn't really have too much trouble uh, getting views to work with paragraphs, so. All right, well thank you everybody. Hope you had a good session.